There are lots of different shapes out there. There's almond and oval and square and squoval <laughs> and scround and round and, and stiletto and edge. Get really crazy with some shapes. I have almond, but I'm going to show you three different shapes today. Round, square, and coffin, all from this shape. I'm going to share my pro tips on how to create new shapes from an existing shape. And an easy way we can get those looks is with an e-file. I've been reading your comments, so I'm going to use an e-file that anybody can purchase. Let's get started. I want to thank Melody Susie for sending me this drill and sponsoring this video. They sent me some wonderful things. I did a video recently about four or five months ago about four drills that we reviewed. Caraman bought them actually off of Amazon and checked them out. One of them was a Melody Susie drill. In that video, I didn't like the particular e-file that I was using that we bought. So they sent me this new one. I'm very excited to try it. Okay, right out of the gate. It's rather cute. Look at that. Nice little desk unit. Okay, and here's the hand piece. I'll just get all this stuff out. Oh, it comes with a little foot pedal and the extension to make it work. And oh, all those drills that I bought from Amazon, they all came with these kinds of bits. Now, as I mentioned before in the other video, uh, most of these you don't necessarily have to have. One of them you do, and that's the mandrel that you put the arbor bands on top of. So that's handy. Uh, they also included, in that other video I did, there was uh, no really great bits, but they actually sent me some really great bits. You can get them on their website or through Amazon, but I can't wait to show you these ones. So let's set the drill up first. Okay, let's get this guy plugged in. Okay, now we don't need the foot pedal, although I gotta tell you, I should do a separate video on that because foot pedals, if you're doing nails day in and day out, Foot pedals on an e-file are brilliant. It will save you a lot of time because then you don't have to do this. The foot pedal just goes with your brain when you're thinking like a sewing machine. You just press it as you... It does save a lot of time. I worked with a foot pedal for years. Okay, so here's the hand piece. Let's plug it in the back. Okay. Now, again, most e-files will have the post metal post that's inside there. And this is how you release. You just, I'm assuming, yep, that's the way you do it. And you just loosen this and then you can pull it out and then you can put in another drill bit. And I am gonna open up one of these packages. I've never actually worked with this color of a drill bit. It looks very pretty. Now, 332 is the common size that most of them come in. Actually, all of them do, so when you buy a drill bit, that's what you can find. This one's medium, medium. Just trying to find which one I can find. These are pretty. Okay, let's open them up. And you just slip it right in there. And then you wanna tighten it just like that. Okay, nice. Okay, this little guy's all ready to go. And I wonder, what is this little? for that before putting the uh, handpiece in do you think so I think so guess we could read instructions <laughs> I don't read instructions <laughs> let's look at the instructions okay bring your beauty salon home oh this is cute oh a nice little thank you card for buying the drill it's cute and I should say if you can put the drill in or the handpiece right oh yeah yeah, you do. You just put it right in there. Now, I, as a nail tech, have been told my whole life, never, ever drop your drill on there because you could ruin the chuck inside and make the drill wobbly from and just ruin the whole thing. And every drill bit will go in there will be wobbly. So when I'm doing this, I'm a little cautious. But when I look down in there, I see that it's quite tapered nicely for it to actually suspend. So it's suspending like this, you might say. So the drill bit is not actually touching anything down there. So it just suspends ever so nicely. Cute. Okay, so I am just gonna, just a little sidebar here. I have never worked with one of these. Look at this thing. Yeah, it's like a little feather duster for the nails. That's awfully cute. I, like I say, I've never used that. And I look at this kit too. I'm not sure much their kits are. This drill in particular, I believe is about $60, which is really inexpensive. 
These are nice little kits. I'm very excited about these drill bits. Okay, so there's another little pink thing. Again, I've never used these. But I will be today. That's cool. And I also noticed this particular e-file is called the Scarlet e-file or electric nail drill. Very cute. So I am wearing a long almond shape, actually. So let's turn this guy on. And I want to turn this almond into, let's say, a coffin. Let's start there. Okay, so when you're first using a drill, this drill is meant for professional and a DIY, either or, but it has 30,000 RPMs. And listen to that. When you turn it up, that's pretty good. And it doesn't have much of a vibration. It's a little thicker hand piece than I normally like to, but I have smaller hands and I work with drills all day long. So I like to have a smaller hand piece. But if you're doing it once in a while, even the girls in my salon, they actually don't mind the bigger ones at all. But I think that sounds really nice and it's very smooth. I actually kind of like the dial. Okay, so I am going to set it up about, mm, about 8,000. Now, when I'm going from an almond to a coffin, the first thing I want to do when I'm thinking coffin, the end of it is completely shaved off. So if you want the coffin the same length as this almond, you have to actually reform it and you're going to have to add more product. But if you can go a little bit shorter, most clients, when they come in, they want to shorten the nails just a little bit. And that's your advantage when you're shaping. So I'm going to work with this index finger and just take a look at that. Right now, it's a long almond. To make it coffin, I'm literally just going to, oopsie. Oh, it's on the, oh, let's see. Hang on that mic. Oh, yeah. There's a reverse button back here. Oh, let me turn it off. Turn it right off before you do that. Change the reverse button to either forward. Actually, this one. Oh, yeah, it says forward reverse. Turn it on to forward if you're right-handed. You can turn it on to reverse if you're um, left-handed. That's why it was skipping a little bit. Yeah, I can actually feel it now. It's funny I didn't pick up on that. Okay, so what happens is if you are putting it in a different fashion, then doing this will just kick back. You don't want that. Okay, so I am going to just take off the end. Now, if you just want, if you want a strong coffin, just take off the tip of it. And then you just have to bring in the sides. If you want a wider coffin, then you can take it down a bit more. But let's say you want to keep this length. When you're working with coffin, you literally, you just chop off the end. So that immediately made it a coffin by taking off the end. But you can see the sides are just a little bit fat as it goes into the free edge being the coffin shape. So if I take a black felt, and just this is how I'm just going to show you. This is where I want the edge of my coffin to be. But this in here is a bit chubby, right? So if I just take these sides down, I'm going to make it a much more straight coffin. Okay, so let's do that. You can actually do that with the drill too. I get black all over my hands here. I just noticed, look at these little holes in here. I love that because then I can take my drill bits. I'm always losing drill bits. Oh my goodness, they're just so little, right? Look at that. That is handy. I really actually quite like that. Ooh, that's a chunky one. Ooh, that's going to take off some serious nail. Okay, look at that. Neat and tidy. Okay, so I was just showing you if I take off the side, I'm going to turn it up to about like 10,000 RPMs. And I'm literally just going to not touch the end. You don't want to touch the end part. You just want to take down that fatness. Just taper that side in just, in, just a tiny little bit. Not much. And I'm not going up into here. I'm not touching the end. I'm simply just taking away that fat belly. <laughs> right? See that? Look at that. That just made it so much more tapered. And then you can do the other side. Now, sometimes this can be really, really frustrating because when you're trying to make anything a straight edge, even a square, actually mostly with a square, square and coffins, anything that's straight down the side, you, you file so much and you think you're getting it, you're getting it. And for some reason, you're going as straight as you can and it still looks bulky. That's because the bulky part is on the top side. 
if you take that top side away, you're actually going to see over the bulk down to the side. So your sides might be straight, but as you come up, it might be bulking out a little bit. So what you want to do, there's several things you can do. When you're filing that way, you want to take your hand file. When you're filing this way, you lean it in a little as you file and you'll take that top side. So with a e-file, I'm just going to turn this on. So do the same kind of technique with your e-file and you want to roll it onto the top. Okay. Make sure you get that bulk and then take off the top side of the bulk because it's not just the one side. See how much more coffin that looks now? Look at that. That's a beautiful coffin. Okay, so let's now do a round. So round is actually quite simple. And to do that with an e-file, you just literally kind of take off the end of it and just go in a round fashion. However, you want to also determine the length that a client wants. So if she or he says, I'd like to get this, like, just take off a little bit, then you can literally just shave off the end, then you shape it. And or you can, if it's a lot they want shortened, then just shorten off a lot. And then you can go from there. But round, because this is an almond, you want to go round. Round is much more, not as pointy, much more round. There you go. And then you just want to give a nice, smooth finish. Now this is still a long round. Most people don't do that. Most people do it maybe a shorter round or an oval if you want to call it. Oval will be a little bit more tapered in like these are. If I wanted to round this shape, yeah, we just, we just take off the tip of it really and you just round it just like I did. So there you go. We started off with the almond and now we have two different shapes. Now for square, if you're going to square these up now like a true square, I have mastered the true square. I am so particular when it comes to the true square, but I found most clients don't really like a true square because they're very sharp <laughs> and they're very, very square. But if I'm going to make this a true square, I am going to form it and I'm going to actually add product. It's the only shape that you really can't get uh, in the regular shapes that we use, not talking the extreme shapes, but it's the only shape that you can't get out of these. Like you can take a square nail and get all of these shapes, but you can't really take these nails and get a square because the square requires a lot of product to be on the side. So most people don't really like a true, true super square. But what I can do is I can get this to look rather square with just from this shape here. You know, most girls, I have to say, I don't have a dial where I can actually see that it goes up to 30,000 RPMs. I've never used a drill. Listen to this. Oh my goodness, it's going to take off. I have never used a drill at 30,000 RPMs. Um, now that I'm listening to it, I go by sound. I don't really care about the numbers, but I can um, literally know that this is the speed I want to do to prep natural nails. And this is the speed I want to, when I'm um, shaping and maybe taking off product. And that's at a 10,000. So you don't really need it at 30,000 RPMs. But um, it's nice to know that it goes that high, but you don't really need it. But it's, it feels really powerful and it's quite smooth. And when even it goes up that high, it's still not vibrating. It's not bad. Okay, so I will put it up to about 10,000 RPMs, it looks like. Well, seven, somewhere in there. Seven or eight, it seems. And if I'm going to make this guy completely square, I'm going to take this down quite a bit because I cannot get a square out of this long shape. I would literally have to add. Sorry, when I'm doing my when I'm doing a client, it's quite a bit easier to hold the nail, but when I'm doing it myself, it's a little bit harder. Now, the further down I take this, I can get it to be more square because it is tapered as it goes long, right? So I am just... The shorter it goes, it can be a little bit more of a square and I'm going to soften the corners, which is the most common shape that people tend to go for, is the shorter square with a softened corner. It's adorable. As a matter of fact, 
for the final shot, that's the shape I'm gonna take it down. So I will tell you, whenever you're shortening nails considerably, they, if they're built correctly, they'll become thicker. The longer a nail is, the more acrylic that we put, the more fake nail, gel, whatever you're using, the more product we have to build a little bit higher, the longer it goes. So naturally, every time you shorten it, it's gonna get a little bit thicker as you go because that's how it's built. And at least that's how it should look because that means it's built properly. When you do that though, and you shorten a nail down quite a bit, you also have to take down the height. So this is looking pretty cute. I actually like this. I'm gonna go a little bit shorter. I don't have my nails short that often, and I'll be honest with you guys, for 28 years, I wore square nails. And then the almond came in, and I hated it at first. I thought they looked awful. But I did them on a few clients here and there, and I thought, oh, that was kind of pretty. <laughs> and then after a while, it just grew on me, and then I thought I'd try it on myself, and then I ended up loving it. And I guess because I wore the square for so long that eh, I was over it. So here again, I'm now wanting to take this down the depth-wise, the, the um, thickness of it, because I don't need it that thick anymore because it's not that long. So I'm going to do that now with this e-file. It's great. There's no vibration on the bit, which is really nice. It feels really good. Now, I will tell you, you don't have much experience working with a drill. Don't work on other people yet until you really nail down the skills of a drill because a drill with these kinds of bits, if you slip, you can do some damage in your cuticles and your, I mean, it will heal, but it would hurt. Don't do that. So if you're going to do that, I recommend practicing on like a plastic finger or hand or yourself. Just, just be really careful. I just don't want you to damage other people, especially if you're charging them. That would be terrible. Okay, so... Okay, so when I take my file, I'm gonna hold my finger as steady as possible. If I'm working on a client, I will hold their finger like that. But it's just me today, so I'm going to make sure that that's nice and square. Now, here's a tip for you to soften those corners. You can leave them square like that, but if you want to soften them a little, take your file and go under a little bit, and you'll soften those corners quite evenly. Now, when you do that, it might become a little thicker. See that? See how thick that is? So then that is a little bit thick. I would thin that a little bit because I wouldn't want my client to leave when it's quite that thick. Okay? So that's how we get square. How do you thin it? Hmm? Oh. How do you thin it? As cameraman asks, I might as well tell you. I literally just take this and go back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Until I thin it the amount that I want. I don't actually just do little spots. I wouldn't do that. The reason why I wouldn't do that is because I don't want to dig any little grooves. I will tell you though, if you're trying the e-file for the first time and you're not really that experienced at it, don't do these bits. These bits are for when you have more experience. This bit in here is perfect for that. Let me open this up. They're usually taped. Yep, this one is taped. Okay, and the reason why, this is called a mandrel. The reason why it's so much better is because we put a sanding bit here on the end. And these sanding bits are usually a medium or fine and coarse. Don't use the coarse one. If you're doing a gel removal or you wanna take product down, you can use the coarse one. See the difference? This is so much gentler and that's what you wanna use when you're first learning how to use. These are brilliant for learning. So I highly recommend that. So let's let's show you that. Okay, so about, uh, about 7,000 RPMs. It's kinda of neat to have the numbers there. Sometimes I'll have a drill that just has like seven. Maybe that means 7,000, I don't know. I just go by feel, right? And look, you can hear how smooth that is. And it's just a sanding bit. You can even, look at, I can touch it with my finger, right? That's how gentle these are. These are great for learning. So if this comes with that, that's fabulous. I'll show you what the other ones are too. So this, I would just go over this just to smooth the whole thing out and make it nice and even over the whole thing. You want to take it down quite a bit because I don't want thick, short, fat nails. I don't want that. So I'm going to take these down quite a bit. Now, they, because these were almond, they have a bit of thickness on the side to create that almond look. So remember that tapered part on the side of the nail? Rather than leaving it fat and bulky, I'm going to taper it in like this, and it's going to give more of an illusion of a square. It's not going to round it out so much. 
It's a very, very small maneuver, a small change, but it's gonna make a huge difference in the outcome of the way it looks. Nails are all about details. Yeah, you can get really good at it and you can really fine tune it once you narrow in whatever you're doing. You can just do it better and better and get better at the detail. And that's where it takes you from an average nail technician to that next level, good. So see how nice and smooth that is and, and nice to work with. And if you slip, you're gonna go around like, like I'm trying to slip for you, there we go. See, I go around, I'm not gonna cut my finger and my skin. That's nice, and that's nice and thin now too. See that, can you get a look at that, Karen? It's quite a bit thinner. So I'm gonna just take this little bit here. These are diamond dust bits and they can do different things. I don't really use them that often because I just find they don't have much of a use in my daily, but I can see this little thing right here. See, there's a little dip there. I am just gonna take the drill. See how much it removes? It just took away that little dip. Pretty hard to see, but- I'll Yeah, it, it would be. <laughs> and this, you can just go over the nail, the whole thing, and you can go around the cuticle to make sure you have it nice and smooth. But I will tell you, be careful with these bits. Anything pointy can have a little more damage if you slip. But you don't want to point these ones in too do deep. You want to go more like sideways with it. Don't point it in deep because you could really dig a hole in there. I don't want to see you do that. And then these ones are just diamond dust barrel bits. So the reason why I don't use them so much is because they're a little too fine if we're going to finish with a gel polish. But if you're going to finish with a nail polish, you can actually use this go over top of the whole nail. It won't change the shape, or if it does, it's gonna take a long time. There's just a gentle, fine diamond dust on there that is just smoothing the nail for you. That's all you're doing with this at this point. Nice. So then you can go over this with a smoothing file. You can take something like this, like a smooth and shine file, and you can literally go over it, just finish it up because there's not really any ones that'll, well, not in this collection anyway. But let's try the little duster. I've never tried it before. So now I'm creating a whole bunch of dust, as you can see. I'm making it nice and smooth for that gel polish application, or pardon me, nail polish. And let's get the little duster in there. Seems kind of silly because I can just dust it off, but... Maybe this does a better job. I don't know. <laughs> it's like chamoising my nail. Oh, oh my. <laughs> well, it does remove the dust. Is it good on the skin too? To do it? I don't see any reason not, but I, you know, not an expert on it. I mean, does it work? It works, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's cutting the skin. We're all very sensitive about microdermabrasion of the skin right now um, because of the Russian manicure bits, which I can't wait to do a video on. It's very fascinating. But look at that. It really took all that. Look at, there's some dust. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Okay, I learned something new there. You okay. Can use that for curling too. Yeah, that yes, in case a curling, you know, game. little game breaks out here. Okay. That's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish all my nails. I think I'm gonna do them all square for that final picture. But uh, we've got ourselves square, round, and coffin, all from one shape. That's what we've done. These are really cute. Okay, let me finish them up. Okay, I have filed them all up and shaped them and oiled them and they turned out perfectly square. Not like the super, super sharp square but a total wearable square that most clients quite like. I just want to talk about the bits. Now, this didn't come with this $60 drill. They are separate, but you can buy them on Amazon and their website as well. But uh, I don't know the names. I'm just assuming the pinker ones, the lighter ones are ceramic, but I'm not sure of that at all. They're all really good bits. This is a new one I've never tried before, this little feathered one as we talked about. That was pretty cool. And they do have these types too, if you like that. And the round top is a safety bit, which is very handy. Anyway, that's really good. A very good selection of bits. Okay, so this is only a $60 drill. It's actually 
pretty good for 60 days. I don't know how long it's going to last on a day-to-day if you're a regular nail technician and you're working constantly. It may last quite some time and it may not, but for $60, I'm actually rather impressed with it. Well, this little drill did exactly what I wanted it to do, was take my nails and reshape them. I could leave these naked, but I think I'm going to put a really pretty color on them for the reveal shots. Take a look. Well, they're very adorable. And actually, I'm kind of liking the square. <laughs> they're so cute. If you're interested in purchasing this inexpensive little drill, you can get it from Melody Susie website or Amazon. Links are below. If you have time, let's do some questions. These questions are great. They're all e-file related. Lana asks, with the e-file or hand file, do you ever accidentally file off your top coat or something? Yes, as a nail technician working every day, all day, by the end of the day, my nails are trashed. That was the great thing about gels when it came in, top coats, it would last a bit longer. At the end of the day, in the 80s, I used to actually repolish my nails every single night. Yeah, it's dedicated. Natasha says, oh, Natasha, call. I know this young lady. Hi, Susie. I was wondering, with the introduction of the e-file, do you ever soak off nail enhancements anymore? Your own nails or your clients? Or has the electric file taken over? That is so true. If you are skilled with the electric file, you would prefer to, as a nail technician, you would definitely prefer to take it all off with the electric file as opposed to soaking, especially if you're wearing acrylics, because if you soak the acrylics in acetone to get rid of the gel top coat, it will eat away at your acrylic nail. So e-filing it off is a much faster way to do it. So we always, always do it. We even joke in the industry like, who, who soaks it off? <laughs> for natural nails, it's perfect for soak off though. Emily says, watching you file your cuticles with that e-file was so stressful to watch. I've been cut so many times that I can barely even watch it being done. I totally get that, Emily. And that's really a shame because that is really um, bad skill with the e-file and that's really left you with a very bad impression. You're not alone, sweetie. You know how many people have said that to me? I've had clients where I've grabbed their hand and picked up the e-file and they were like pulling away or they're tense or they even express that they don't like it. So I've had to show them what I can do with it to make them feel much more comfortable. And I always win them over, but I totally understand. Once you've been, you know, cut so many times, you're definitely going to be e-file shy. There's no question about that. I'm sorry that that happened. That's why you want to practice, I think, before yeah. you actually try it on yourself or anyone. Yeah. Anybody who's cutting anybody like that in the studio. I mean, once in a while it happens and a client jitters or something. I get that. But for a client to be scared to happen to them on a regular basis is not a good thing. Katie says... I love your video so much. I got my nails done last week, but I noticed that whenever my nail tech got some monomer on my skin, it burned and hurt. I also noticed that their e-file was up too high. It burned a few times. Mm -hmm. I got acrylic nails with tips and gel polish. I should mention that I'm not, that I'm a nail biter. Awesome. Well, good for you. I'm sorry that that's happening. If it's burning, the monomer is burning. Actually, that's not very good because Monomer, you don't want the monomer to touch the skin on a regular basis or the fully, you know, combined acrylic, you know, the acrylic that's combined with the monomer and the powder. You don't want that to be sitting on your skin. But if it's burning, I'm a little concerned about that because it really shouldn't burn when it hits. But if you've got maybe a sensitivity to it, that might cause a burning. So that concerns me. And you said you noticed her e-file was up too high. Yeah, that's a common problem that people think you need to crank that thing up there to get all the stuff off, but you don't. If you do take a chance of burning the client. If you're having trouble getting it off, it may be that you just need a better bit. Maybe your bit's dull. Maybe you're using an old one. Maybe it's contaminated somehow. So yeah, using the e-file too high is a very misconception from a lot of nail technicians that I've noticed. It doesn't need to be running that high. And you take a chance of burning the client. And as the client mentioned before, when that happens, it makes you scared. You don't want to use it anymore. Can so that that's also be from... Just holding the e-file drilling drilling in one spot too long. Yeah, most definitely. If you are holding the drill and it's turning, the e-file is turning over and over, repetition, of course. If it's rotating over and over, it's going to definitely burn if you're leaving it in one spot too long. So it can be a technician, a technique, sorry, combined with uh, improper bits. So there's several reasons they can cause that. That's a shame. I hate to say it. that's a really, I hate to hear stuff like that, but it does happen. And that's what I'm all about in my channel is to hopefully help we can change those kinds of 
misunderstandings or, you know, things that weren't caught in education or even just learning at the nail table. Well, thanks for joining me. Those are great questions. Thanks for joining me, you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. There might be one more there. <laughs> no, oh, honey, oh, no, that's it. Okay, good. We're out. We're, done. I, I... <laughs> We're out. <laughs> All right. <laughs>